Good morning everybody. Well today it's lockdown letters. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let Christ us rejoice and, and be glad in it. it. Today I have the privilege of sending you a, a letter or a spoken letter. Now um, in my family my mother had very high standards about thank you letters. So as a little girl, on Boxing Day or the day after, I would be supplied with pen, paper, envelopes, already addressed, and stamps. And I would start my thank you letters. It started off quite well, the address, the date, and dear to whomever. That would fill half a page. And then... I hope you had a nice Christmas. Then I would grind to a halt. What to put next? Start straight with the thank yous. A few more inquiries. A few more questions. Always took a while to get going. Later this morning we will hear from John writing in Revelation, and he had no problem getting going with his letter. Let us pray, and today I'm using liturgy from Wild Goose. Among the poor, among the proud, among the persecuted, among the privileged, Christ, Christ is, is coming, coming to, to make, make all, all things, things new. In the private house, in the public place, in the wedding feast, in the judgment hall, Christ, Christ is, is coming, coming to make, make all, all things, things new. With a gentle touch, with an angry word, with a clear conscience, with burning love, Christ, Christ is, is coming, coming to, to make, make all, all things, things new. new. That the kingdom might come, that the world might believe, that the powerful might stumble, but the hidden might be seen. Christ, Christ is, is coming, coming to make, make all, all things, things new. Be. Within us, without us, behind us, before us, in this place, in every place, for this time, for all time. Christ, Christ is, is coming, coming to make, to make all, all things, things new. Because you made the world and intended it to be a good place and called its people your children. Because when things seemed to be at their worst, you came in Christ to bring out the best in us. So, gracious God, we gladly say, Goodness, Goodness is, is stronger, stronger than, than evil. evil. Love, Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. darkness. Truth, Truth is stronger, stronger than, than lies. Because confusion can reign inside us, despite our faith. Because anger, tension, bitterness and envy distort our vision. Because our minds sometimes worry small things out of all proportion. Because we do not always get it right. We want to believe goodness, goodness is, is stronger, stronger than, than evil. evil. Love, Love is stronger, stronger than hate. Light is stronger, stronger than darkness. darkness. Truth is stronger than lies. Because you have promised to hear us and are able to change us and are willing to make our hearts your home, we ask you to confront, control, forgive and encourage us as you know best.
then let us cherish in our hearts that which we will proclaim with our lips. Goodness, Goodness is, is stronger, stronger than, than evil. evil. Love, Love is stronger, stronger than, than hate. Light is stronger, stronger than darkness. darkness. Truth is stronger than lies. Lord, hear our prayer and change our lives until we illustrate the grace of the God who makes all things new. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the, and the word, word was with, with God, and, and the, the word, word was God. We're now going to have our reading, which today comes from Revelation chapter 1. And it's verses 4 to 18. I'll just give you a moment to uh, look this up if you've got your Bibles handy, because it's quite a, a long and full passage. Revelation chapter 1 verses 4 to 18. This letter is from John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Grace and peace from the one who is, who always was and who is still to come, from the sevenfold spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness to all these things the first to rise from the dead, and the commander of all the rulers of the world. All praise to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. He has made us his kingdom and his priests, who serve before God his Father. Give to him everlasting glory. He rules for ever and ever. Amen. Look. He comes with clouds of heaven and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the nations of the earth will weep because of him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. I am John, your brother. In Jesus, we are partners in suffering and in the kingdom and in patient endurance. I, John, was exiled to the island of Patmos for preaching the word of God and speaking about Jesus. It was the Lord's day and I was worshiping in the spirit. Suddenly, I heard a loud voice behind me, a voice that sounded like a trumpet blast. It said, write down what you see and send it to the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia and Laodicea. When I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven gold lampstands. And standing in the middle of the lampstands was the Son of Man. He was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were bright like flames of fire. His feet were as bright as bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. He held seven stars in his right hand and a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth and his face was as bright as the sun in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one who died. Look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I said it was a pretty powerful letter. 
if this was a question of sport and I was Sue Barker, perhaps I'd say, how many acclamations were attributed to Jesus? So we have the usual letter introductions. From, where and who? Well, Patmos, where John was exiled. When? Sunday. The period of his exile, we think, was about AD 95. And to whom? The seven churches. And the completeness of the number seven suggests wholeness and encourages us to take it that John is writing to the whole church. So that would include us today. Then we begin to read who the letter is about and from whom the actual content of the letter is coming and the images pile up. The faithful Christ, the one who died and is alive. The blazing eyes, the brilliantly glowing countenance, the dazzling appearance, the gold sash. Emanating fire, swords and light. No wonder John fell as in a dead faint. My letter to Auntie Pinky and Uncle Frank had nothing on this one. But Jesus raises John up. And as we so often hear, those words are said, don't be afraid. You see, this letter was written at a time of great trial, trouble, persecution, uncertainty. But John is not here with tissues and sympathy and pity. He is here with strength, with glory, with honour, with truth, with promise. And the image of Jesus standing among the lampstands is showing us Jesus standing among the churches. So today, in our time of tremendous world trouble and uncertainty and upheaval, of personal pressures, of local pressures, let us take encouragement that Jesus stands among us. He is with us if we are on our own in our rooms. He is with us in our families, our friendship groups our church and community, our nation, our world. Perhaps also we can be encouraged by this letter to send some of our own by post, email or telephone to encourage others undergoing trials. move on to prayers. <clears throat> Holy God, though this world depends on your grace, it is governed and tended by mortals. So we pray for those who walk the corridors of power in the parliaments of this and other lands whose judgments we value or fear. May they always consider those they represent, make decisions with courage and integrity, and resist any temptation to abuse the trust placed in them. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. We pray for those who hold key positions in the worlds of finance, business and industry. Those whose decisions may profit some, 
and impoverish many. May they value people higher than profit. May they never impose burdens on the poor which they would not carry themselves. May they never divorce money from morality or ownership from stewardship. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. We pray for those in the caring professions, all our key workers, looking after kind and challenging people. And for those who make decisions regarding the nation's health and welfare. May they always sense the sanctity of life and every person's uniqueness. May they help and heal by their interest as well as their skill. And may they be saved from tiredness and an excess of demands. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. Let us remember those for whom we are responsible and to whom we are accountable in what we do today. May we show to them the thoughtfulness, tolerance and kindness of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. Lord, hear our prayers, and if today we might be the means by which you answer the prayers of others, then may you find us neither deaf nor defiant, but keen to fulfil your purposes for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. From where we are to where you now lead us, Jesus. Jesus. Now, now lead on. on. From the security of what we know to the adventure of what you will reveal, Jesus, Jesus now, now lead on. on. To refashion the fabric of this world until it resembles the shape of your kingdom, Jesus, Jesus now, now lead on. on. Because good things have been prepared, prepared those who love God, Jesus, Jesus now, now lead, lead on. on. I pray you'll all have a, a good day today. I'm going to say goodbye now, but I'm going to leave you with a song from a friend of ours, uh, Noel Alexander, uh, to listen to. Thank you. Let me offer everything and
Acquaint me 